why is marriage so hard? <laughs> marriage is so hard because we married sinners. And our spouse is married sinners. We have all married sinners that Mama, need, need, need the Lord. Mama, how do you develop? Develop pictures? Yeah. I'll tell you all about it during lunch, okay? Can you get more pictures in here? That's mm. how? I'll tell you about it at lunch. Hang on just a minute. So, we are sinners because of the curse, because of the fall of man, because Adam and Eve disobeyed in the beginning. And now, everybody born after Adam and Eve is born in sin. And we have absolutely no hope apart from Christ, apart from Jesus. Jesus came to earth to save us. He came to earth, he was born a baby, grew up and lived a man's life and lived it in a way we could never live it, perfectly, blamelessly, sinlessly. Um, he is God, he is holy, he is incapable of sinning. And because of his perfect life, he then was able to pay for our sins on the cross when he died. And that is what he did on the cross. He paid for every sin and resurrected on the third day. And if we believe this, they call this the good news, they call this the gospel, and it's good news because instead of being doomed to hell because of our sin, we are given a way of redemption through Christ's work on the cross. So that's the good news. We are not doomed to hell any longer. We can be with Christ in eternity, we can be saved. Our souls can be saved. And so only because of Christ's work on the cross can we, um, can we spend eternity with him instead of in heaven. But we're still in this flesh and we're still on this earth and this earth is still fallen and cursed and it's still a very, very hard life. And so we battle sin every day. We have to fight it every single day, mortify it. I love the mortification of sin, beat it down, destroy it every single day. And some days it's easier than others and some days it's just, it feels like it's consuming you. Um, when you believe the gospel that I just shared with you, the Lord literally sends his Holy Spirit to dwell within us and we become the temple of the Holy Spirit. We have the literal living God, spirit of God inside of us. And because of that and only because of that can we obey his word. The spirit enables us to live a life out that is pleasing to the Lord and that is capable of obeying his word. We could never do it in our own strength, ever. And so we need the Holy Spirit um, to live out a godly marriage. We need the Holy Spirit to live out a Christian life. And so marriage is hard because we're sinners and we're still in this flesh in this world and we still battle sin every day. But because of God's amazing grace, um, when you um, want to live a life that's pleasing to God because you love him and you love and you hate sin and you want and you're a believer you're a new creation your spouse is going to benefit from that um, they have different roles than we do biblically and I've shared that in other videos but one thing that we have in common is we need to live out our Christian faith and when we live out our Christian faith we are exemplifying fruit of the Spirit described in Galatians 5, love, described in 1 Corinthians 13. Um, we're going to be loving, we're going to be joyful, we're going to be patient and kind and faithful and gentle and self-controlled. And those things make for a good marriage, a peaceful, loving, harmonious marriage. And um, when you're always seeking the other and loving someone else above yourself, when you're always seeking... Um, to serve and to be humble instead of your way and be selfish um, and instead of pride, there is going to come nothing but good out of that. Um, even if you're the only one giving. Ideally, two believers living this way is ideal. But in many, 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 many occasions, there's only one believer or there's only one believer that's living this out. and it should not discourage you to the point of stopping obeying God because you're not getting in return what you're giving. If you're doing what you're doing only to get it back, 
then you're in the wrong mentality. You need to do what you're doing, serving God, obeying God, living a Christian life towards your husband because you seek first to honor God and you seek first to obey God. And um, you may be, you know, alone in that. Um, things may not, your husband or your wife may not be living a life honoring to the Lord in return, but it doesn't matter because your first priority is to obey the Lord. So I just want to encourage you in that and um, just encourage spouses to really converse about these things. This is something to be talked about. This is something you are together. <laughs> you are one in the Lord's eyes and you are together for the rest of your lives. Make it a happy time. Make it a happy time. If you are believers, revisit the meaning of marriage. Revisit what do you want out of life? Do you want to be conformed to the image of Christ? Well, let me tell you, marriage is really, 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 really sanctifying. You will come out on the other end looking more like Christ than you did in the beginning. And so what a great opportunity to do what you desire in your life. Be more like Christ. Be sanctified by the trials and the challenges that marriage will inevitably bring. And walk through it together. You're not alone. You are not alone. You have your mate. This person that God has blessed you with to walk through this life with. So just want to encourage you and um, inspire you today. Love your mate well. Love your spouse in a biblical way. And wait for your treasures and blessings from the Lord. And then the ones that you have here on earth, praise the Lord. All the better. But um, our heart should be first seeking to honor and obey Christ. I hope this is encouraging.